How's it going, you guys? So in this video, we are going to dissect a fetal pig. Um, there's a lot of other things that get dissected in this classroom, but I decided on the fetal pig because evolutionarily speaking, they are uh, very closely related to us compared to some of the other things that we would have otherwise dissected, uh, like a rat or a frog, for instance. Um, so if you come on, come on in and take a look at our pig, our specimen here, um, you can see that it is, it is in fact a pig. Um, and uh, one thing that I want to note before we actually start cutting the pig open is the gender of the pig. So if you were to look between the pig's legs, you see this bulge, that right there indicates that it's a male. These are the testes. Um, if it was a female, there would be uh, an additional hole um, besides the anus. So. We're going to uh, cut the frame so that you guys can see an overview of the pig and we're going to initiate the dissection. All right guys, so we are back. Um, as you can see, we have tied back the pig so that the legs are spread apart um, and so we can access the uh, chest, ca uh, chest cavity as well as the uh, abdominal cavity. You can see this here uh, was the umbilical cord attached to the fetal pig. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the dissection. So what we are going to do is uh, we're basically going to lift up this umbilical cord. We're going to use it to our advantage. We're going to lift up on the umbilical cord and cut just above it with our scalpel. So this little knife thing is called a scalpel. So we're going to cut just above the umbilical cord and make a small incision. Once we make that small cut, we are going to cut up do a kind of a vertical cut uh, through the abdominal cavity and into the chest cavity. Um, well, we'll get to the chest cavity eventually, but through the abdominal cavity and right when we start to hit the rib cage, we are going to make two incisions going this way, right underneath the legs, and then two incisions going right above uh, the lower legs. So front legs cut right underneath, uh, forward legs or back legs cut right uh, above it. So. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and speed up this video for the dissection. All right, now as you can see, we've made two flaps. Um, notice there are some uh, juices on the inside of the pig. Um, we don't necessarily want those in there, so we are going to uh, remove them. Those are natural juices that are uh, created by the pig's body, as well as some, what, uh, some of the juices that um, got into the pig from it being in the preservative fluid, uh, which is um, a, uh, a type of formaldehyde, but not formaldehyde. So we are going to remove some of these juices. So we've successfully removed some of the fluids from inside of the pig. Um, so now we can kind of get access to some of these organs. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of these organs in a minute, but one organ that I want you to uh, pay close attention to is this flap right underneath here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me see if I can cut it free. But there's this muscle flap right here. So this flap right here is called the diaphragm, and the diaphragm is the muscle that allows us to breathe, um, and it allows this, or would have allowed this pig to breathe. breathe. Um, so basically, uh, this is the uh, structure that separates the chest cavity, or the thoracic cavity, from the abdominal cavity. Um, so once we get up into here, we are now dealing with uh, the rib cage and the sternum, which is this bone um, that kind of protects the heart right in the middle of our chest. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to cut up through the chest cavity uh, and we are going to try uh, right through that bone and we're going to try to separate that out. So we are going to do that next. So this tool right here is called a probe. This is the first time that we're going to use it. 
Uh, the probe has a blunt end to it, which is nice because it allows us to kind of explore or break some uh, soft connective tissue up uh, and separate out organs without actually puncturing the organs. Um, so we're going to use this just to kind of help separate a little bit of uh, connective tissue up in the chest cavity. So I wanted to pause real quick just to make a quick distinction. Uh, so you might notice there's some blue substance here. Uh, there's also a little bit of like red substance in here. Uh, and so this is not naturally part of the pig's body. Uh, the blue substance, because a lot of people have the misconception that our blood is blue and it, then it becomes red uh, when it leaves the body, this actually isn't true. Uh, if anything, it's more of a uh, maroon, a dark red, uh, before it's oxygenated. And then when it leaves the body and, and gets that oxygen, it becomes a more bright red. The reason why it's blue inside here is because when the pig dies, they drain the blood out of the pig, and then they inject it with this artificial stuff um, to help us visualize uh, blood vessels a little bit clearer. Um, over here, it looks like it got a little bit messy in that process, but that's okay because we're not looking to analyze all of the blood vessels in this pig. But if you notice, um, around the heart especially, you see some of these lungs, these like uh, different lobes of the lung. So the lungs allow us to breathe. So you can see lungs on this side as well. So we have lobes of the lungs surrounding the heart. The heart is uh, right in the center of the chest. Um, that is going to serve as the primary pump to get all the blood to the rest of the body to carry nutrients, um, to deliver wastes to where they need to go, um, like the uh, kidneys, for instance, to basically get the wastes out of our body and into our urine. So the same goes for the pig. If you look, so the lungs and the heart are in our chest cavity, uh, or in this case, the pig's chest cavity. But here, right underneath it, that flap that I was talking about earlier, we have our diaphragm. So the diaphragm is the muscle that separates the two cavities, and basically the diaphragm uh, changes the pressure by contracting and pulling down, uh, causing there to be negative pressure in the chest, allowing the organism to breathe in. And then as it relaxes, it's going to basically rise up, uh, creating uh, positive pressure in the chest, and that's gonna cause the organism to breathe out. So air can enter and exit the lungs as needed using the diaphragm muscle. And then right underneath the diaphragm, now we're getting into the abdominal cavity. So in the abdominal cavity, we have this big structure right here, that is the liver. So the liver is there for tons and tons of purposes uh, that have to deal with uh, detoxifying harmful chemicals, um, to getting rid of anything that, or uh, dealing with anything that the rest of our body doesn't know how to deal with as well, like fructose for instance, uh, fructose metabolism. So there's our liver, it uh, serves tons and tons of purposes, very useful, it's super, super big in the pig and in us. But if you lift the lobes of the liver, you see this pouch-like structure, that is the stomach. So if I can lift that up with the probe, remember I'm using the probe so I don't puncture it. But if I lift that up, we see the stomach um, and that digests our food. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention about the liver, the liver produces a substance called bile. We learned about this uh, when we talked about the digestive system. But bile is there to what we call emulsify fats. Uh, we basically take the bile, we pump it into the small intestine, and it breaks down the fats into smaller fat droplets that are more easily broken down and absorbed by the body. So um, the liver produces bile, uh, which uh, handles fats. Now the thing is, we don't always need bile to be in our small intestine, to, which is right underneath our large intestine, or uh, sorry, right underneath our stomach. We don't necessarily need our, uh, our bile all the time. So if you look right underneath the liver, I'm not sure if you can see it as well, but this pouch right here, let's get this out of the way. This pouch right here, right underneath the liver, 
that is uh, called the gallbladder. So the gallbladder basically stores the bile until it is needed. And when it's time, uh, once we get some fat moving into our small intestine, that gallbladder is going to squeeze uh, and it's gonna pump out all of that bile that's been stored up. Um, also the gallbladder, once it gets the bile, it will kind of pull water out back into the bloodstream um, and that's going to kind of concentrate the bile so it's really, really super effective once it gets pumped into the small intestine. Now, I was talking about the small intestine, let's talk about that a little bit. So here we have the stomach. Right after the stomach, it leads into the small intestine. Now that's all of this stuff right here. So if I pull this out a little bit, it's all connected by connective tissue. Um, we don't necessarily need to know the name of that tissue. It's mesentery, but for our purposes, that's a little bit more than we need to know. And as we continue on, you see towards the end of the small intestine is the large intestine. It's a little bit thicker uh, in size. And um, that the uh, small intestine really serves the purpose of absorbing all of the nutrients from our food. Once it kind of gets to the large intestine, all that's really left to absorb is water. So the large, the large intestine absorbs water uh, into the body, into the bloodstream, uh, and circulates the water, the blood circulates the water around our body. And then eventually we get rid of whatever is left, all the waste. So those are some of the major organs. We have uh, lungs, lobes of lungs on either side of the heart right in the center of the chest. We have this flap, which is the diaphragm, separating our chest cavity with our abdominal cavity. Right underneath the diaphragm, we have the liver. Underneath the liver, uh, pretty much connected to the liver and the pig, we have uh, the gallbladder. I'm trying not to block it or cover it uh, from view. But we have the gallbladder and then Underneath the liver, kind of to the upper right-hand side of our abdominal cavity, we have the stomach. The stomach feeds into the small intestine, and then the small intestine feeds into the large intestine. Now, some other uh, things that we want to talk about. Let me get rid of some of this juice. Let me get rid of that real quick. So some other organs that I want to mention. Towards the back, almost connected to uh, the back of the abdominal cavity, we have these bulges right here. These bulges, I'll try to take them out, but they're covered in connective tissue, but those bulges are the kidneys. They're kind of towards the back of the abdominal uh, cavity region, almost connected to the wall. So we'll see if we can separate that out from the wall in a second. But also back here, we have the spleen. So this right here is the spleen. Let me use the probe to kind of detach it, break that connective tissue without disrupting any other organs if possible. Yeah, here we have the spleen. There we go. So here's the spleen. Now the spleen, it, it serves a role in our immune system. It helps with the, uh, generate um, white blood cells of, of certain types. So we have the spleen for immune support. Furthermore, Attached to the small intestine, if we go right underneath the stomach, attached to the small intestine, you see this thing that kind of looks like steak right underneath the stomach. That right there is our pancreas. So the pancreas produces, right here, the pancreas produces insulin, uh, which helps to, it also produces this other hormone called glucagon. And insulin and glucagon basically help uh, control blood sugar levels. Um, if you have or know someone who has diabetes, uh, they have a hard time uh, either producing the insulin or having their cells get that signal, um, which could uh, mess with your blood sugar levels. But in addition to controlling blood sugar, the pancreas also produces uh, a pancreatic juice that gets pumped into the small intestine, um, and it helps break down a lot of the stuff that we couldn't uh, break down in previous steps. So a lot of people think most of the digestion, chemical digestion happens in the stomach. It turns out that most chemical digestion happens right towards the beginning of the uh, small intestine because that is where the pancreas, the liver, right here, the liver, and the gallbladder are all attached. Um, they're all attached right towards the beginning of the small intestine. So that, those are some of the major organs. I mentioned a kidney over here see if we can get that up a little bit. Let me get rid of some of this juice.
But here you can kind of see it. That right there is the kidney. That's one of them. Uh, we have two kidneys. We only technically need one. The other kidney is over here, attached to the back of the other side of the abdominal cavity. So you can kind of see it there. But the kidneys serve the purpose of basically filtering out any of um, the metabolic wastes or cellular wastes in the bloodstream. And it filters that out, uh, like kind of uh, makes it super, super condensed or, uh, sorry, that's not the word that I'm using. Um, what is the word? Concentrated, there we go. So we basically are going to make the uh, urine super, super concentrated um, with only wastes. We try to absorb any water back into the bloodstream so we're going to concentrate the urine, pull uh, any wastes out from the blood, um, uh, basically filter that into the bladder, and then we're going to get rid of any wastes. So that's what the kidneys are there for. And you only really need one, which is why you might hear about people donating one of their kidneys. Um, if there's another person who has kidneys that don't work properly, um, you could do that potentially. So we have two kidneys, one on each side towards the back of the abdominal region. Um, and now I want to cut up a little further up into the neck region so we can see some of the tubes that lead to uh, or near our mouth. So at this point, I would consider our pig uh, pretty much fully dissected. Uh, this is about the extent of what we do uh, in anatomy and physiology when we dissect the pig. Uh, but some other uh, organs that I have exposed that I want you to take note of is uh, this part right here. So this bulge in the neck, that is actually your voice box, otherwise known uh, or more scientifically known as your larynx. And your larynx is responsible for containing your vocal cords and that gives your uh, voice the sound that, it, that uh, you produce when you talk. Um, and it gives you the ability to speak and, and, and make words. On top of that, um, the larynx can also drop forward, especially in males during puberty. And the larynx can cause a bulge in the neck known as the Adam's apple. So that's the larynx right there, your voice box slash Adam's apple. Uh, right below the larynx, uh, the larynx is the big kind of like the beginning of your respiratory tract. Really, it's the nose and the nasal cavity. But if you were to breathe in, it's going to pass through your voice box, through your larynx, through the next tube, your actual windpipe, known as the trachea. So the trachea is uh, basically your uh, tube that allows air to pass into your lungs. And notice it has a lot of rings on it. I'm not sure if you can see it but there's several rings around it that keep it open. Uh, and that's important because we don't want our uh, windpipe to collapse. So we have these rings of cartilage around the trachea to keep the trachea open and allow us to breathe properly. Right behind the trachea is this one little tube. I'll try to pull it out. This guy right here that runs right behind the trachea, that is your esophagus, or that is this pig's esophagus at least. Uh, the esophagus is the other tube that allows food to pass through uh, and into your stomach. So if we followed down the trachea, it would lead us to the lungs. But if we followed uh, this esophagus all the way down, it would lead us to the stomach down here, this pouch right here. So uh, one tube is for air, one tube is for uh, food. If you've ever heard the term or the expression, uh, the food or the beverage went down the wrong pipe, that means that the person accidentally swallowed or uh, some of the water accident accidentally moved into uh, the larynx and into the trachea instead of the esophagus where it should have gone. So now you have liquid or food going down to your lungs as opposed to your stomach, um, which is what would cause someone to maybe cough. And that could happen when um, you have you're talking while you're trying to eat um, or you perhaps try to breathe while you swallow. Um, that could cause something like that to happen. But let's just do a quick recap of all of the organs that we talked about. So we have the larynx, we have the uh, trachea. Behind the larynx and trachea, we have the esophagus, which is gonna run all the way down to the stomach. We have the heart, dead center of the chest. 
We have uh, the lobes of the lung. We have two lungs here. Lung here and a lung here and all of the lobes that make up the lungs. Uh, right underneath the heart and lungs, we have the diaphragm that controls your breathing and that separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. As we move into the abdominal cavity, let me separate this out a little bit more so we can see it better. So now I've exposed a little bit more of the abdominal region, got those flaps out of the way so you can see better. But where we left off, we were talking about the diaphragm. So just below the diaphragm, we have the liver. Attached to the liver, we have the gallbladder right there. Underneath the liver to the right is the pouch that we call the stomach. Underneath the stomach, not too far away, we have the spleen, kind of in the uh, left-hand side of your abdominal cavity. Underneath that, we also see the pancreas, which is this uh, steak-looking structure. The uh, stomach then feeds into the small intestine, which is all of this stuff right here, the small intestine. And then finally, it feeds into the large intestine, which absorbs the water, and then we get rid of the wastes. Behind that are the two kidneys, kidney here, as well as kidney here. And those are all the major organs that you need to know for the fetal pig. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, I will attach a, uh, a worksheet where you can try to label the parts of the fetal pig on your own, uh, but that's pretty much it for this video. So uh, stay tuned. If you like the video, give it a like. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And uh, as always, um, if you want more content, or if you want to see more content like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos to come.